Welcome to High School Game Day, Week 6, Playoff Edition. We're going to be breaking down the first round of playoffs and uh, give a recap of last week. So last week, we started out with Prep and Hartfield. Prep went to that game. It was a close game throughout the game. They finally took it in the end. Uh, Prep beat Hartfield 28-19. We both predicted that. Close game, though. What do you think? It was a little closer than I thought it'd be. I feel like I thought Prep was going to run away with it, but they, they didn't. Hartfield kept it close, but... Prep still came out with the win. Yeah, moving on to PCS and JA. That being a really close game, 16-20. to 20, A lot of PCS people were mad about that, that ending. But JA finds a way, so that kind of sets them up well in the playoffs. It seems like JA keeps getting those lucky endings that just keep making people mad, but they're skimming by somehow. So Yeah, some close wins for them this year. Park Lane and MRA. MRA wins 45-21. We both predicted that. We yeah. thought they would handle them pretty easily like they did. And uh, the the biggest game of the week, Lamar at Leak, which uh, kind of set up the way the bracket worked for 5A. Lamar won just in blowout fashion, 47-13. We both predicted that, but we I don't think either one of us predicted that kind of blowout. No, I, I thought it'd be a little closer, but I mean, Lamar's just on a roll, just handling people left and right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to face them in playoffs mm -hmm. right now. They are, they're hot for sure. Uh, move on to Winston at Carroll. A one-point game. Winston uh, loses by one uh, in Carroll. I, I predicted that. Uh, yeah. You thought Winston would dominate that game. I mean, yeah, a little unexpected. I mean, I knew Carroll was going to be physical coming in, but I felt like Winston had more talent and was just going to outscore them and just be able to defend the run that Carroll loves to do. But, you <coughs> know, just Carroll came out to play. Yeah, Oak Hill goes scoreless in their last game, yeah. losing to Marshall 40 to nothing. Kind of a disappointing end of their season. But uh, John Ross Craven getting the all-time uh, Oak Hill rushing record. That's uh, We're very proud of him as we have Coach Craven on our uh, squad. Uh, Greenville went to West Point, 40 to 8 final score there. Greenville can't figure it out. They are 0 and 8 yeah. now. We both predicted that easily. Startful went to Oxford for the mini Egg Bowl. Uh, went in there and dominated, won 47-28. Neither one of us expected that. We thought Oxford would uh, handle them. Uh, a big big news report, I think Matt Coward was out that game. Mm. We did not know that at the time. So Startful comes in, gets the big win they need. Hopefully that uh, translates to their success down the road. I mean, I feel like this is a big stepping stone for Startful. They finally got their offense back rolling. I feel like all their weapons are being used currently. I feel like it's going to be great for the end of their season. Yeah, big step for them. Heritage went to Pillow. Pillow senior night didn't go how you want your senior night to go. Heritage wins 35-17, as we both predicted. Starfield Academy traveled to Washington, and uh, they kind of struggled in the first half, picked it up in the second half, and uh, got the win 39-21. Starfield's going to need to figure it out this week. I think they will as they uh, face a uh, leak in the playoffs. That wraps up our uh, last week recap. Uh, the final regular season predictions, I went – uh, 44 and 8. Watt went 38 and 14. Both uh, pretty good right there for our first time doing this. And uh, we're going to move on to Bobby and his interviews. Thank you. I'm Jonah McCrory, a.k.a. Bobby. And I'm here with Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken, who is your favorite student to sub for at Startville Academy? Okay, I don't really have a favorite student. I love most all the students. Each one we have a unique relationship with. Like you take Cy Halliburg. He's unique in himself. You're unique in yourself. And so are my other ones. Thank you. And what do you think the game will end up being like on Friday night? Well, if you can get the receivers to catch the passes, we will probably win by a pretty good margin. But if they don't want to catch the passes, it's going to be a long night. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Back to the studio. Thank you, Bobby. And uh, we're moving on to our playoff breakdowns. Um, first round for 4A, we start with uh, Winston and Marshall. Winston happens to get that eight seed in that first round uh, home field advantage. Uh, I think that plays a key role, and they uh, beat Marshall. It's going to be a high-scoring game. Not much defense going to be played there. Winston's defense, though, does come clutch in the second half and stops Marshall enough to win it. I mean, I feel like Winston lost last week, but they do have home field advantage, and everybody knows when you get to playoffs, it's just a whole different ball game. I feel like Winston's going to come in and – Play pretty good coming off a loss, and I think they'll come out with a win. Yeah, and uh, Tri-County, the 5 seed, plays Indianola, who sneaked in there at the 12 seed. Tri-County probably will dominate this game from start to finish. I think they are the strongest team in 5A and 4A, 
even though they did lose to ACCS by one point in the regular season, I think that'll change later. And like you said, they lost to ACCS, but that is their only loss. They were dominant all season and had that tough one. I feel like that didn't really matter to them. I feel like they're going to roll in the playoffs and probably make it to the championship. Yeah, and uh, Carroll and Bowling Green. We've uh, predicted a lot of Carroll games this year. Haven't said anything about Bowling Green. I'm going to have to go with Carroll with this one since they're the seventh seed. Yeah. I don't see an upset happening there. That's my prediction. Like I said earlier, they did beat Winston. I mean, they've been a physical team. They love running the ball. I feel like they're going to go in there and have a pretty hefty running game against Bowling Green and yeah. come out with a win. Big, strong, physical team. That's what they're known for. And uh, Riverfield and Clinton Christian play. Uh, the 6-11 and 11 seed matchup, Riverfield will be the home team in that one, and I think they dominate. Yeah, I feel like the home field advantage does play a huge role in that one. Riverfield, obviously, the 6 seed, Clinton Christian, the 11. I got Riverfield. In and they won some key games early in the year. I know I think they played a 5A school, one very, very high-scoring game for them. So maybe they can make some noise, too, and make a run at this thing in 4A. Now moving on to 5A, our uh, – First round breakdown there. It starts with the uh, Pillow Academy and Silliman Institute. Pillow actually happens to get a, the home field advantage for this one. Silliman took a big loss last week and that kind of dropped them down. So they'll be traveling to Greenwood uh, to face the Mustangs, and I think Pillow wins this one. Yeah, I feel like Pillow, they got a stout running back, and also it's a home field, and everybody knows Pillow student section. It's pretty wild. I feel like they're going to have the momentum in that one, and I don't think Silliman's going to stop their run game. Yeah, they'll be ready to Pillow. play. Um, Oak Forest and Bio, Bio, not really, they're kind of a, having a down year this year. They they got to face uh, Oak Forest, which they probably don't know much about, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a, a tough one for them. Yeah. Cruz of Goose will run the rock pretty hard, but I don't think it's enough to take down the five-seed Oak Forest. Oak Forest wins this one. Yeah, Oak Forest and Bio haven't met yet, and I feel like Oak Forest, uh, I mean, I, I feel like they're a pretty strong team. Bio obviously does have a really good running back. I just don't think that's going to be enough for them to get to Oak Forest's yeah. level. I feel like Oak Forest is going to win this one. Yeah, now uh, Starkville Academy hosts Leak. This is the second time they face each other this year. The first time Starkville Academy dominated in every aspect of the game. Um, do you think that happens again this week? Uh, the first time Starkville Academy went to Leak, this time Leak is coming to SA. SA student section is going to be rowdy. I feel like the momentum from the, the back half of the season for SA is going to lead into this one. I feel like it's going to be an SA win. Yeah, and Leet's kind of struggled here late. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that affects them Friday night. I have SA winning as well. Lamar and St. Joe, this is a big matchup here. Lamar has been absolutely hot this late in the season. They started off slow playing some big 6A schools, and I think that just prepared them for uh, what's coming right here in the playoffs, and they make a big run. Yeah, I feel like Lamar, they had a really rocky start. They had to play an extremely good team in Georgia. But I think, like you said, it prepared them for the end of the season, and I feel like they're going to be a great team to see in the 5A playoffs. Yeah, and that wraps up our analysis on the 4A and 5A brackets. So we're going to send it to Ben Lyle, who has our weather report. Thanks, guys. I'm here at Jay Logan Field, where the Vols will be facing Leak Academy for the first round of playoffs. It's going to be about 68 degrees at kickoff. It's going to be a beautiful night for football. We'll send it back to the studio. Thank you, Ben. Uh, now 6A has their last regular season week this week, so we're going to break down those three games, starting with MRA at Hartfield. Two uh, really competitive teams. You know, they uh, faced each other in the state championship last year, and uh, they're kind of that uh, same game here as it is played at Hartfield. Some good, good, uh, good matchup. Uh, MRA will beat Hartfield, but it will be closer than people expect. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people think MRA is going to run away with it, but Hartfield's not bad. Uh, I feel like they're up there with MRA, but I just don't think it's going to be enough for them. I feel like MRA is going to win it. Yeah. And uh, Jackson Academy has to travel to Macomb to play Park Lane. That's going to be a tough game for the Raiders. Uh, I'm sure they'll travel well. Their fans typically do. It basically decides who hosts the same game next week as they will probably face off again in the playoffs as the four and five seeds. I think Park Lane wins, gets home field advantage, and we'll see how they match up next week. I feel like this is another close one in 6A. Uh, I feel like, you know, Jay, like you said, they do travel well. You know that dog's going to make the trip with yeah. them. But Wolf, I feel like it's maybe. not going to be enough. I feel like Park Lane is going to win this one. Yeah, you don't want to get that wrong. I don't know if it's a wolf or dog, but they'll get mad <laughs> at you for sure. Prep at PCS. Prep will go down to Hattiesburg, and they will absolutely dominate PCS. And that's about enough. Not much in that one. Yeah. Now we're sending it to Camp, who's doing some interviews this week. Thanks, Simon Wyatt. I'm here with Miss Ham. Miss Ham, what grade are you teaching right now? I teach fifth grade. And what are y'all going over in class right now? 
we are learning about NNMs and synonyms. I got you. Okay. Are you excited for playoffs to start this week? I am excited for playoffs, and we're ready to beat Leak. That's right. Back to you, Simon Wyatt. Thanks, Camp. Now uh, we're going to have a story on our women's basketball team as they prepare for their season. They started out this week with some preseason matchups. Uh, they won two, lost one, some very competitive games. Uh, I got to watch them play Columbus Christian last night, and they look very well. They've been moving the ball around. It's going to be key that they get it down low to Katie Keenum this year, and she uh, drops double-doubles all night. I've heard she's absolutely dominating the paint. So Yeah, and then the perimeter shooters, Meg Brown and Sarah Stokes, they just got to attack and uh, shoot the three well this year, and they could have a successful year. Now we're going to send it to Kate, who has the interviews and the story. I'm Kate Brown, and I'm here with the head coach of the varsity girls basketball team, Coach Roberts. Coach Roberts, how do y'all think y'all done in the preseason so far, and how do you, what does that look like for the regular season games? Well, we've played three, se three preseason games so far, and we've won two and lost one. We've got one more on Saturday in a breast cancer awareness tournament. Um, we're real pleased with how we've done so far. All the games have been competitive. What's y'all's first regular season home game, and what do y'all think y'all have to do to prepare for that? Our first season, uh, first game is against Lamar. Um, they have a very strong team with really athletic players. So um, we'll have to work on our fitness, defense, and um, just be prepared to go hard. And lastly, what do y'all think y'all have improved from last year? Well, we've worked really hard on our ball handling um, to handle pressure. Um, We've really improved our free throws. We're at 79% for the season thus far. And I really think we're gritty this year. My, that, I, I attribute that to our senior leaders. Thanks, Coach Roberts. Back to you, Sean Wyatt. Thank you, Kate. That wraps up our show this week. I'm Cy Holberg. I'm Wyatt Bice. Have a great day. Go Vols.